he was like, look, you're going to have no education. Like, you're going to be screwed at some yeah. point. But, you know, you do whatever you want to do. So at 15, you decide you're moving to Australia. Yes. Uh, how did you break <laughs> that to your parents and how did they Oh, I'm smart. Respond? I'm very strategic. I found an exchange, in, an exchange student program um, in the place I wanted to go surf, in the school I wanted to go to. And I sold the idea to my mom and dad that this was great, that I was going to learn English. You know, I was already fluent in German. My dad speaks seven languages, so it was like... Oh, you're going to learn fluent English? Okay, that's important. Where do you want to go? Well, <laughs> I want to go to this little city, you know, that has surfing in their curriculum. So I can surf as well. Your mom says she has kind of a family of intellectuals and you come back from Australia <laughs> and you decide you don't want to oh go God, to school uh -huh, anymore. Uh -huh. uh, what do they say? <laughs> that was a funny period. Um, yeah, yeah, I did not I did not want to engage in school activities anymore. Um, and I did not want to use shoes. <laughs> I did not want a bunch of things. And um, my mom was kept a little bit outside of my life at that time. Um, she was just kind of losing it and really upset of uh, the route I was taking. But with my dad, I was just kind of negotiating like that, you know, I think morning it's not the thing for me anymore let's try school in the afternoon because you know morning time is the best time for surfing Rio I think that has to be kept alone and then I was like mm, dad you know like afternoon like I also need to train in the afternoon I think I should study at night and then I went to night and then dad you know at night I'm so tired from surfing all day like there's no way I can keep up with this can I just do tests and like study at home and go just to get approved and so, yeah, it just became a negotiation with my dad. And he was fine with all of it? He wasn't happy with it. He was like, look, you're going to have no education. Like, you're going to be screwed at some yeah. point. But, you know, you do whatever you want to do. And he kind of just stepped back and, and let the, the, yeah, let it happen. What role would you say the movie Blue Crush played in your yeah. life? Big role. I remember exactly. I used to be addicted to it, me and my dad. I remember watching it in his room because he had TV and being obsessed with it and obsessed with Pipeline and obsessed with the idea of girls that were like surfing big waves and brave and um, independent. And, and then it ended up kind of being my life. I was surfing pipe and Waimea and I was waitering tables and working in a restaurant. And I, I think you waitressed for three or four years after you moved to uh, Hawaii and you did that when you're 17 yeah. years old. Uh, what do the parents say at that point? Yeah, well, I, no, at that point is like, oh my God, you know, our kid's going to go to Hawaii. How are we going to like assess this? My mom did pretty good. She became friends with this lady that was renting me a room and it was like a hostel for Brazilians. So she would always try and connect with locals that she knew through friends of friends. My mom knows everyone. And they would always tell her that I was okay. You know, like your girl, like all she does is surf. <laughs> you know, like she goes to bed at seven and then wakes up at four. So I like, it's not. And that's when she started being a little bit more accepting of what was going on. And, and so the partying had stopped at oh, that point yeah. in your No, I, I was, as soon as I started surfing, maybe like a year in, I was already completely focused on, on sports. And maybe also lucky that I did get a taste when young. I wasn't curious about it. You know, I just, I didn't care for it. Like yeah. I knew what I wanted. Around the time you were in Hawaii was when your parents kind of cut you off financially yeah. like mm -hmm. they weren't gonna help well i have a hard time knowing exactly when my dad cut me off like my mom never supported me financially my dad did uh -huh. when i left i remember we had a deal of a sum around 800 a month which is good you know but I couldn't buy no surfboards. I couldn't buy wetsuit. Like there was no extra in there. That was like for the hostel and some food. Any extra I had to work and save. A year and a half later, I think my dad had enough. And he was like, look, are you coming back or are you not? And I was like, no, I'm not. And he was like, okay, so then you, you're gonna figure yourself out. 
it, it wasn't meant to be a fight or, or a way to bring me back to Brazil. It was more like, you're deciding, you're, are you an adult? Are you gonna do this? Can you afford? Yes, I'm gonna stay, I'm gonna stay humble, I'm gonna keep working and I'm gonna try it. Tell about being in Bali with no money and mm. your credit card being denied. How do you know? <laughs> I've I've had a few times in Indonesia where I was just completely um, <laughs> terrified, and at some point I couldn't get the money out or something, and so I had no cash, I had no credit card, I had nothing, and I had like enough money to pay my food bill and pay the room. But yeah, in Indonesia I was out of money a few times, and and mostly because. I knew that if I was in the U.S. or if I was somewhere first world country, if I said, look, that I need money, like, just send me and, like, it will be here tomorrow. But the thing with Indonesia was that sometimes it just didn't work. And when I got caught up on those problems, it was, it was nerve wracking. What was the most creative way you were ever able to save money to get something special for yourself or somebody else? So at some point, I had to make enough money to buy myself a ticket to go to Indonesia for the first time. And I got myself a job in a 7-Eleven from 10 p.m. to 8 in the morning for two weeks. And I would get the bus, ride one hour to get to this job, and be like literally on a 7-Eleven by myself like this. For like 10 hours, because I was never awake at that time. Yeah. And then in the end, the guy never paid me. How did you end up getting the money? I said, Dad, I worked for two weeks. <laughs> I'm supposed to get paid. And I'm pretty sure he covered me and I was able to get my ticket. And I landed in Indonesia on April 10th when I turned 18.